So maybe I'll ask you a question, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Minister. How do you think Cornerstone Maths fits into the government's vision for mathematics? Well, clearly that you know, Cornerstone has achieved tremendous results and our, our vision for mathematics and really the curriculum as a whole is that we want to give teachers and schools more freedom about the how they mm -hmm. teach and how they deliver in the classroom. So what we're doing is we're setting very high expectations. Mm -hmm. So in revising the national curriculum, creating the new GCSEs and A-levels, we are setting expectations are they, as they are in some of the top performing countries because we really feel that in order for our children to get good jobs when they leave school, they need to be able to have those skills. However, that is combined with much more flexibility for teachers and schools about how they get there. And one of the things that I'm very keen to see, I think you know, for, for some people, subjects like mathematics and physics have a intrinsic motivational factor. You mentioned that you love mathematics. Yeah. You know, I love mathematics too, it's fun yeah. to do. But that doesn't necessarily apply to everyone and we need to find ways of getting people engaged. One thing I'm very keen to talk about is the kind of careers that you can follow. Yeah. If you study mathematics, I think it's, it's very important for teachers to, to know about and to talk, to talk to students about so they can get some idea of what's available once they leave school. I met some apprentices in my constituency who work in engineering and they said to me, well, you know, we now really understand what, why we did trigonometry at school and now we're doing it at college and we're actually using it in our work. It's really fun. But at school, they had no idea why they were doing it. And I think, you know, really good teaching is about getting all of those things across. And, you know, some of the examples we've heard about retention, I think, and that, that comes across very clearly. Um, retaining information, being engaged in it is very important. And one of the things we see, particularly for girls, is that although they start school achieving well in maths, by the time they get to GCSE and A level, the performance isn't any good, and it isn't as good as for boys. And that's largely a confidence issue. It's because they're not as confident about what they can do, not because they're not as able. So I'm just very interested in what things can schools do, what things can teachers do to build up the confidence of students, the fluency of students, the understanding of students of the applicability of mathematics. Thank you very much. I wonder if any of the teachers would like to comment on that point. I've now thought of a question for the teachers. By oh, the go way. on then. Yes, go on. Sorry. Um, <laughs> is, one of the things that we're, we're talking about, we had a very interesting um, discussion yesterday with, with careers organisations, is we know that we've got a massive demand out there for STEM skills, for maths in particular, subjects like physics, and yet not as many young people go on and study that subject at A level as we would hope. What, what do you think the reason is for that? And what, what can be done about that at a school level to, to encourage more students to take, take maths further or take physics further? I think part of it is to take the fear factor out. Some of the students feel that maths is a hard subject. They're told by their parents it's a mm. hard tough subject. So things like Cornerstone, where students can work through at their own pace, they can find the engagement and they can find the fun in it and say that actually it's not quite hard because on some of these modules I've waited until after they've completed it before telling them actually this work that you're doing is about two levels higher yes. than the work that you're currently supposed to be working at. But so. your, your parent point is a bit like my taxi driver point which is how do we convince you know because I think parents are you know I want to get through to parents really on some of these points that actually and, and I think if you, if you look at the countries that are really successful in mathematics, there's perhaps a more positive cultural attitude to mathematics generally. Mm -hmm. and do, you, do you talk to parents about maths and sort of say why it's important or why it's exciting? Um, generally, um, unfortunately, because of the makeup of our particular school, we tend only to have the parents come to parents' evening that already know that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, just uh, part of where we're based, I think. I, I, I do think it's a bit of a culture change. Um, where in our school, maths has got a high profile, and it's mm. probably because of the demographics of the area, um, a, a background Asian community, where 
that the parents do value. And the first teacher they would want to see in parents' evening is maths, and the last teacher that they're going to leave is maths. So there okay. is that there. But um, uh, initiatives where parents are involved in the child's education, where, mm -hmm. say, there are intervention um, uh, sessions about to start, involving the parents in activities with their, pu with their actual students, just to see what, what they went through many years ago, but that, but that the student can see that the parent is actually engaging and, and, and can enjoy it. And sometimes it just reduces that fear factor. And then they stop telling their child that this is, you know, oh, I, I was never any good at maths at school because they can see the evidence in front of them when they engage, engage with them. I believe uh, basically similar to what Latifa said, social demographics does have a part to play. And I think generally at Langdon Park School, one of the things that we try to do is help students identify with certain contexts and Cornerstone helps to do that as well. So for example, the linear functions module, it starts by creating a context and that context is you're a games programmer and as a games programmer, you'll be working with other people mm. in the Sand Circle organization who are business um, people and they will be dealing with the financial aspects. And by creating all of these contexts and bringing them to the student, the student begins to identify that, okay, these concepts in terms of maths relate to these ideas and these ideas relate to these professional outcomes, mm. if you could put it that way. So I think it is about bringing the picture closer to the students. Yeah. It's very easy to leave engineering to the college or to the university student, yes. rather than bringing yeah. it into the key stage three mm. classroom mm. and making that you know, accessible for students. I, sorry, I have to stop this conversation. It was absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much. But I think the minister is required elsewhere. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.